thank you all for being here. Again, this is a huge development, not only for myself, but I really hope it pushes the development of dApps on Sorbonne forward. And, uh, you know, I really hope it becomes a part of a lot of developers' journey as they continue to develop on Sorbonne. Our mission with the Sorbonne dApps challenge is simple. We aim to grow the developer community and contribute to the expansion of the Sorbonne ecosystem by empowering developers, both you and I alike, to build and launch decentralized applications on the Stellar network. Today, we're not just launching a challenge, but we're kickstarting a journey towards, towards the future of building dApps on Sorbonne. So thank you again, everyone, for being here. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of our recent accomplishments. All right, so what did we improve since last time? Um, before, we had an auto pop-up that would uh, prompt the user to connect to their freighter wallet. Instead of having that, we felt like it would be a user uh, experience improvement to have this connect button. So now this is what we have for users to choose to connect instead of having that auto prompt. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Again, we have our address box, completed challenges box, and DAP deployments that store all of the challenge uh, information that you have gone through. So let's go ahead and go back. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our other improvements. So if you can see here, now we're auto-populating this form that says public URL to, uh, to be a former URL that you've deployed if you uh, went through checkpoint number seven. And if you see here, the button is no longer just submit, but if you've already submitted a URL, it changes the state to resubmit. I could show you the example here on checkpoint number seven on the payment side. So just another nice touch for the user experience. We hope it keeps you guys more engaged. And uh, I really do feel like, you know, small touches like this really do improve uh, the, the UI UX and overall just really happy to implement things like this all the time. And again, another improvement, clickable links. Right after you complete checkpoint number seven and complete your challenge, you can go right over to your dApp, click on over and start checking that out. All right, we've also made changes to the layout. So if you remember, we had a challenge dropdown and then each challenge would have a dropdown of its own and it would be like challenge walkthrough, challenge walkthrough, challenge walkthrough. We found that we kept running into the same fundamentals and concepts over and over again. So we abstracted all of that from the walkthroughs in themselves and came up with this guide section. A lot of cool stuff in each of these sections like Docker. How are we leveraging Docker for local development? We're using it to deploy contracts and see implementations on our front end super fast, and we're able to see the changes we made there. React, what libraries are we using? How are we leveraging React to improve our dApps? All that and more inside of React. Smart contracts, a bunch of cool functionality occurs inside of the logics of our example dApps. I really want to highlight some of those things here. So more to follow as we keep developing these example dApps. And, uh, you know, you could... Take some of this logic here that you learned from this section, implement it into your own smart contracts and keep building and building and building. Initialization, how are we standing up our dApps? Are we using things like scripts? Yes, we are. We're automating initialization with scripts in a lot of our dApps. And here in this section, we show you how to do that. Um, I really feel like things like this will really improve the user experience because, you know, a lot of this stuff is looked over, you know, it's, you know, uh, scripts in general, they're kind of just like glanced over and people will create one script after another, et cetera. Here we show you how we're initializing our dApps using shell scripts and things like that, leveraging tools like the Sorbon uh, CLI, all that and more inside of initialization. And last but not least, the wallet section. Did you know that you actually have to enable experimental mode to connect to things like FutureNet? Uh, we also have code examples on how we here are um, implementing wallet connection inside of our dApps themselves. So a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool changes. And I do want to remind you guys, these are live in the docs right now. So if you can get on the docs, Sorbonne docs and follow along, I highly suggest you do so. And I really suggest you start going through some of these challenges, start messing around. A lot of cool stuff there. Um, one last thing I'd like to highlight is the advantage to having this inside of the docs is that you actually are able to leverage search. So let's just say you go through a crowdfund DAP challenge and you say, all right, I understand the smart contracts. I kind of want to see how I can, you know, add my own flavor, my own twist, what have you. you. Just go up here. Let's just say 
I think my adapt needs more authorization or more, um, I want to get more specific on the type of authorization that's implemented inside of my adapt. All you have to do is search authorization right here. You can learn everything that you need to. We have all these resources for you to learn things like authorization, other fundamentals and concepts. So all in a centralized place, you could start customizing your adapt right away. So cool stuff there. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the highlight of today, the Sorbonne React Payment DAP Challenge. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch my wallet over here. Awesome. And I'll just go ahead and split my screen. <clears throat> All right. And big shout out to the wallet engineering team for releasing this DAP. They have a lot of other cool DAPs in the pipeline, such as their Atomic Swap DAP. Uh, I can go ahead and drop a link to the initiative here, Scaffold Sorbon, uh, which is putting out a bunch of good content. Highly suggest you take a look. There are preview 10 tested, right? Yes, Matthias, we did update all of our smart contracts and they are preview 10 tested. So good question, good question. Um, all right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and kick it off with some of these checkpoints here. Again, these are live in the docs, so if you want to follow along, feel free to do so. I've done a little bit of legwork here. I've already cloned the repository and installed our dependencies, so I'm going to move on to checkpoint number two, where I clone our token repo and run the make command. And boom, just like that. We start building our tokens. So what I just did is ran the make command and what this is doing is compiling our Rust smart contracts into a WASM file that we'll be able to leverage later during token deployment. <clears throat> and we'll just give that a second to build. All right, looks like that's all done. We've changed directories in our token direct into our token directory. And I'm just gonna set myself up for success by exporting my, uh, my keys here so I can use them in our deployment. So we'll say public key. And this is for demonstration purposes, y'all. So again, it's crypto, not your keys, not your crypto. Please don't share your secret key with anyone. Just again, doing this for demonstration purposes. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and deploy our, our token. <clears throat> All right. And again, we're using this tool, uh, the Sorbonne CLI, which makes it easy to do things like deploy your contracts and in, uh, investigate the WASM files of already deployed contracts and overall just a great tool to interact with Sorbonne all right from this CLI. So now that contract is deployed, let's go ahead and save that contract ID. And let's go ahead and initialize our token. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to name this token demo token, but, uh, you know, does anyone have any um, does anyone have any recommendations for names or symbols that they like to, you know, call this token while we're all here? Greed. All right. Right. It says greed token. Okay. Hey, we'll go with the hug. Okay. Uh, that's funny. Let, let's go with greed. Meridian. Okay. I have to go with Meridian because, you know, <laughs> Why not? As I say, M R D N. All right. Hey Morgan, just to um, just to answer your question, this uh, explain what the Sorabon DAPS challenge is and what are we launching? Oh yeah, sure. Just a recap of the Sorabon DAPS challenge. Um, this is an initiative, or this is an initiative to onboard learners onto Sorabon through a series of challenges. Right now, there are two. We have the challenge, uh, crowdfund DAP challenge, and we have the Sorbonne React payment challenge. So users can complete a series of checkpoints, and at the end, will deploy their own end-to-end uh, -end DAP 
uh, using a service called Vercel, which will then allow the community to interact with them. All that and more, we'll go through uh, this example here and uh, I'll just demonstrate. Cool, cool. So now we have our Meridian token um, initialized. So let's go ahead and what, what, what do we actually do there? So during this initialization process, we set the account admin, which is like the master uh, key holder, so to speak, um, mainly used for things like minting and burning the token. We set our decimal precision to seven, which enhances the granularity and more um, allows for more flexibility during transactions. Similar to Satoshi's over on the EVM side, we set our name and, and then we set our symbol. So big shout out to the Sorbonne development team. We've yet again improved the dev experience by improving this, uh, this here. If you remember um, a couple months ago, you actually had to pass the hexadecimal representation of name and symbol. We changed it to now, all you have to do is pass a string and you can execute the initialization or the initialize function through that. So good stuff there. We love to see it. We love to see improvements coming down the pipeline and let's keep moving forward. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mint. I'm gonna go ahead and mint to my key here. <clears throat> All right, awesome, and remember, I know this looks like a larger number than it is, but remember we have 100 plus seven zeros. So that's good to just be 100 Meridian tokens. And let's go ahead and double check the balance here. You can do that by invoking the balance call. ID. <clears throat> All right, we'll wait for that one to load. Cool, we've retrieved our balance and we can verify I have 100 Meridian tokens. Now, that's great, right? Pat yourselves on the back if you're following along. We launched and initialized our token smart contracts. Huge steps there, huge accomplishment there. Let's go ahead and start a new terminal with our front end. <clears throat> All right, so shout out again to the wall engineering team for you know creating this dApp. Awesome front end stuff here. Uh, we love to see it. And let's just go ahead and do this walkthrough. So I'm connected to account uh, GCSX, and this is our key, our uh, admin account as well. So we'll go ahead and connect to Freighter. Shout out to the wallet kit um, from Crate Technologies, doing a bunch of good stuff there for Stellar. Next, and then we'll go ahead and just send that to this account here. All right, and then let's go ahead and get our demo token account. Uh, all right. There you have it. We have our balance of our Meridian token. So I'm going to go ahead and send over 33. And then let's just say Meridian. Cool. Let's go ahead and sign the transaction with Freighter. Oh, We've got to enter our password here. And we'll go ahead and submit that. Boom, too easy. And just like that, we have our transaction result. We know that we've sent that, those tokens over. Um, and to verify that, let's go ahead and just run the balance command from the Sorbonne CLI on this address here. Okay. <clears throat> Awesome. So we verified that our, con or our address GBEA has, an, has a balance of 33 Meridian tokens. So that takes us off or that brings us to checkpoint number six here. And what we're going to do 
now that we've tested this works locally, let's go ahead and share this with the world and upload it to Vercel. I'm going to stop the local development server here. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so I've previously deployed this to Vercel, so it's just going to build for a second. Um, but, you know, while this builds, I really want to do a quick shout out to everyone who makes developing dApps on Sorbonne possible. I'd like to shout out George for developing the Sorbonne client, delivering some good tools regarding, uh, you know, simulating transactions, handling asset, making uh, JavaScript usable for developing dApps. Shout out to the wallet team for the scaffold Sorbonne and all the great work that they do on the example dApp side. And also Tyler Vanderhoeven from RP Siege, who has a comprehensive smart contract hacking uh, gamified um, learning uh, platform that really enhances smart contract development on Sorbonne. So I say all that to say this, the goal here is to not only show you how to create these applications, but demonstrate that with Sorbonne, dApp development is now within reach. And now more than ever, we're focusing on the dApp development experience. So we hope you go forward and keep building dApps based on these tools. Now, let's bring it back to the DAP challenge. As you can see here, we have our deployment at, at this Vercel endpoint. I'll go ahead and submit that for checkpoint number seven to complete the challenge. And bam, just like that, I've completed challenge or checkpoint number seven. And let's go ahead and click on over to see the result. Amazing. So now we have a hosted instance of a DAP that we could share with the world. I'll go ahead and drop that in the chat if you want to start messing around. You probably don't have any Meridian token, so you, you may not be able to send it, but this is what the front end looks like. It's hosted. Uh, users can interact with it if they want. I believe you can enter your own token ID, so you might be able to start using this right away. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the DAP challenge. And yeah, so that just about wraps it up for the dApps challenge as far as the live coding demo. Now, I do want to go over some uh, future developments that we have in store. You know, this is just the beginning, y'all. So this is the launch. Thank you again for being here. But what's in store for the upcoming developments of the dApp challenge? Well, we want to make the user dashboard a little bit prettier, right? We want to, you know, make this more engaging. We want to have user progress being tracked. We're going to have better uh, user experience and uh, a better user interface. Also, just about every week, we're going to be releasing DAP challenges where users get an end-to-end -end DAP example that they can build and deploy on Sorabon. With the next one is going to be our LP DAP example. That's right. You're going to get an LP DAP example that you can use the smart contracts as a boilerplate for, use the boilerplate UI uh, to go ahead and you know use on your own DAP development journey. 